Hello everybody, this is Carmichael the Cat, and welcome to your 13th Lua 5.2 tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over coroutines, so let's get started. So, what a coroutine is, is it's a kind of special function that uh, can be paused and then resumed mid-execution. So, in the middle of the function, it can be paused, and then control will go back to the main line of code, which is just our code outside of any functions, or in whatever function called the coroutine. And then, later, we can resume that coroutine, and execution of the function will continue from where it left off. So this may seem kind of weird and confusing, but once we create a few examples, it will make more sense. So, to create a coroutine, you say co equals coroutine dot create. And then, as a parameter, you give it the function that you want to be the coroutine. So we'll say function. And we'll just start with something simple to show a few things. This doesn't really have anything to do with the function pausing and resuming, but there are a few things we need to go over before we get to that. So we'll just print hello, oops, and then end the function. So now we have our coroutine, and to call it, because the coroutine won't execute automatically, we say co coroutine dot resume and then as a parameter, we give it the coroutine that we want to call. So this will call this function as a coroutine. So now, if we run this, we get hello, so the function was called successfully. Um, but this doesn't seem very useful right now. It just kind of seems like a more complicated way to call a function. The real use usefulness of coroutines comes when you use the yield function, which allows you to pause execution of the function. So we'll create a for loop in here. So we'll say for i equals 0, go up to 10. Actually, we don't need to go that far. Let's go up to 5, and let's just set i equal to 1. We don't need many runs of the for loop to show this example. And we'll end this. And all we're going to do in the for loop is print i, and then we'll call the function coroutine.yield. So now what's going to happen is the for loop's going to run, it's going to print i, and then coroutine.yield is going to be called, and that's going to pause the function and then hand control the program back to the main line of code. And then the coroutine will just sit there in what's called the suspended state, waiting for a call to coroutine.resume, and when that call comes, we'll need another call to coroutine.resume because this just starts the function. So when that next call to coroutine.resume comes, the function will continue from where it left off. So coroutine.yield will return, and then the for loop will end. It'll go back up to the top, print i again, and then pause again. So we'll keep doing that until i equals 5, and then the function will end. And we'll see what happens then in a minute. So let's call coroutine.resume again. Or actually, first, let's just see what happens when we run this once. So we run it once, we get 1, and then the function stops. So the for loop didn't complete, the coroutine just stopped. But if we were to copy and paste coroutine.resume, then we get 2, do it again, we get 3, do it again, we get 4, and again, we get 5, and again, we get nothing. So what happened is the for loop ended and uh, therefore the function ended because the for loop is the only thing in the function. So now this c this call to coroutine.resume ended the function so now if we were to call it again the function is ended so let's see what happens. We actually have to print coroutine.resume to see what happens. Let's see what happens when we try to resume the function once it's done. We call it and we get our normal output from these calls to coroutine.resume and then from this call to coroutine.resume that was printed, we get false and an error message cannot resume a dead coroutine. So once the function that you've created within your coroutine is ended, it's dead, you can't use it anymore, you have to reset the coroutine with another call to coroutine.create, and it will uh, give you an error message if you try to call coroutine.resume again. But uh, the function is in called in protected mode automatically, so instead of actually getting an error in your program, the error will just be returned by coroutine.resume. So this example shows the kind of back and forth action that's happening with coroutines. So 
the program starts with the main line of code and control. And when I say main line, I just mean the normal execution of the program outside of any functions. So it creates our coroutine, and then it calls coroutine.resume, and that passes control into the coroutine instead of the main line of code. And the coroutine starts a for loop, prints i, and then calls coroutine.yield, which passes control back to the main line of code. And then you could do anything between these two calls to coroutine.resume, but we didn't do anything, so immediately uh, the main line of code calls coroutine.resume, which passes control back to the coroutine, which does the same thing, uh, goes through the for loop, prints i, then calls coroutine.yield, and then passes control back to the main line of code. And that keeps going every for every pair of coroutine.resume and coroutine.yield that we have. So think of coroutines as working in pairs. There must always be a pair of coroutine.resumes and coroutine.yields, except for the one called the coroutine.resume that will end the function. So coroutines just kind of swap control back and forth between uh, two different uh, lines of executing code. So next we're going to talk about some more of the details behind the actual functions in coroutines. So another function in the coroutine uh, library is coroutine.status. So if we were to call coroutine.status, oops, forgot the dot, dot status, and then you pass coroutine as a parameter. We actually have to print this. So what this function does is it just passes the status of the coroutine at the current time. So we've just created the coroutine. It hasn't been run yet. So if we run this, we get suspended because it's not running. And if we were to pass this during a call to the function, let's just copy this, copy this, and then we get running between each of the numbers that were printed out in the for loop. So while a coroutine is running, while it has control of the program, it is in the running status, so let's get rid of that because it's taking up some output. And then after the coroutine has, or the function within the coroutine is returned, it's over, and the coroutine is done, when we call it, we get dead. So once the function within the coroutine ends, its status is dead. And there's also another status. If you have a coroutine that resumes another coroutine, the coroutine that uh, started the other one, it's in what's called the normal state because it hasn't been paused by a call to coroutine.yield and it has been started previously, but it's also not running because the program's control is in the hands of the other coroutine. So it's in the normal state, it's kind of between running and suspended. So I'm not going to create an example for that state, but that's what it is the coroutine.yield and coroutine.resume functions also take in parameters and have return values besides just the coroutine that's being resumed for coroutine.resume so coroutine.resume can take parameters and those parameters will be returned by a corresponding call to coroutine.yield and also the opposite is true coroutine.yield can take parameters and those parameters will be returned by the call to by the corresponding call to coroutine.yield. So if you pass a if you pass parameters to yield, they'll be returned by the next call to coroutine.resume. And if you pass parameters to coroutine.resume, those will be passed to coroutine.yield. So to show this, we'll edit our for loop a bit. So what we'll do is we'll print co oops coroutine.yield and as a parameter we'll give it i and instead of just calling coroutine.resume we're going to print it so we'll copy this and we have one two three four five six calls to coroutine.resume so one two three four five six so now we're printing coroutine.resume each time we can get rid of this call to coroutine.status we don't really need it anymore also this one and as extra parameters to uh, coroutine.resume, we'll just give it a few random numbers. So we'll just give it one and two here, uh, three and four here, five and six here, seven and 
eight here. Mess that up. Uh, one sec. There we go. Nine and ten. Eleven and twelve. And thirteen and fourteen. So now these values that we passed into coroutine.resume will be returned by the corresponding call to coroutine.yield. So they'll be returned by coroutine.yield and then printed out by this print function. And then I need an extra parentheses here. And then the coroutine.yield will take the parameter i and that will be returned by the corresponding call to coroutine.resume and printed out by this print function. So if we run this, we get true and 1, and then 3 and 4, true and 2, 5 and 6, true 3, 7, 8, true 4, 9, 10, true 5, and 11, 12, and then just true. So what's happening is this first call to coroutine.resume is being called, and it's pa being passed the parameters 1 and 2, and coroutine.resume doesn't return until the corresponding call to coroutine.yield. So coroutine.resume passes control into the coroutine, it hasn't returned yet, and then the for loop starts, and then coroutine.yield is uh, printed out, but coroutine.yield doesn't return until the next call to coroutine.resume. So coroutine.yield isn't returning the 1 and 2 that were passed to the first coroutine.resume, and it's just giving the coroutine.yield uh, uh, i, which is in the first place 1, it's giving coroutine.resume i to print out. So once we call coroutine.yield, controls pass back to the main line of code, and coroutine.resume returns. And since i was given as a parameter, which is 1, it returns true because the call to the coroutine was successful. And then the value that was passed to it, which is 1. And then coroutine.yield's waiting for the next call to resume. It still hasn't returned yet. Code, uh, control of the program just has been passed to the main line of code. So then we get the next call to coroutine.resume. So coroutine.yield returns and it's past the 3 and 4. So it will return the 3 and 4. So the 1 and 2 are kind of wasted. It returns the 3 and 4, which are then printed. And then the for loop starts again and the same thing happens again. The call to coroutine.yield makes the second coroutine.resume function return which prints out true and 2 because i is 2 now and i was passed into the coroutine.yield function and then passed into the coroutine.resume and then the coroutine.resume returns and it goes on like that forever the coroutine.resumes keep passing their parameters into coroutine.yield which then returns printing those values out then the for loop starts again and coroutine.yield is called pass the control back to the main line of code and the value passed coroutine.yield is printed out. So the last thing we're going to go over is the last function in the coroutine library. It's called coroutine.wrap. So I'm going to say c equals coroutine.wrap. And the coroutine.wrap function is very similar to coroutine.create. Uh, it creates a coroutine, but instead of returning a reference to that coroutine, it returns a reference to a function that will resume the coroutine. So this probably sounds pretty confusing, but once you see the example, it will make more sense. So we'll just create our function in here. We use the same little for loop. So for i is 1, go up to 5, and we'll just print i and then yield the coroutine, and then end, and end, and close parentheses. So now, instead of having to call coroutine.resume and then pass, c, pass in c as a parameter to resume and then, or start and then resume the coroutine, all we have to do is call c. Oops. We just call c. And if we run this, we get 1, which is the first thing that out, it outputs, and then it yields. And then if we call it again, we get 2. And again, we get 3. Again, we get 4. Again we get 5, and again, the function ends. So the coroutine.wrap function uh, is pretty much the same thing as coroutine.create. It just lets you be a little more concise with your calls to resume. Instead of having to say coroutine.resume and then pass in c as a parameter, you can just call c as a function. 
and also the any parameters given to the C function will be passed into the call to coroutine.resume within the C function so uh, that works the same way as well and the C function will also return any parameters given to coroutine.yield the, cor the corresponding call the only difference in the return values and parameters of the C function between C and coroutine.resume is that the C function won't return the true or false value that says whether the coroutine was called successfully or unsuccessfully and that leads to some of the problems with coroutine.wrap so this may seem like a perfect solution to not having to call coroutine.resume uh, and then passing C as a parameter but there are some problems with it uh, that kind of make it more difficult to use so the first thing is what happens when we try to resume the coroutine once it's dead. So after this call to C, the coroutine is dead. So now if we had created this coroutine with coroutine.create, if we called coroutine.resume and then passed C as a parameter, coroutine.resume would return false, and then it would also return the error message cannot resume a dead coroutine. But if you create the function with coroutine.wrap and then call the function that has the reference to it, uh, once the coroutine is dead, and you try to run it, you get an error, an actual error, instead of just having an error message returned, and it's the same error message, cannot resume a dead coroutine. So, this, using a function that was returned by coroutine.wrap is a lot less safe than calling coroutine.resume, because you can actually get an error that will crash and end the program, instead of just having an error message returned to you. Another problem is that since you don't actually have a reference to the coroutine itself, all you have is a reference to the function that resumes the coroutine, you can't check the status of the coroutine, so you can't check whether it's suspended, running, normal, or dead. So that could also lead to the problem with this error, because you can't check whether it's dead, so you can't make sure it's not dead before you call the function. So uh, that's another problem with it. So. Be careful when you're using coroutine.wrap, only use it when you need to use it. There are some situations where it's very useful, but if you can, just use coroutine.create and then resume the coroutine with coroutine.resume. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to go over the local and global environment tables, so I'll see you then.